Hey everyone, welcome back and happy Thursday. Um, always, always I have to try to remember. Guys, welcome back, happy Thursday. We are just kind of trying to figure out what's going on in the day. And now, of course, we don't get to really go through, it's not every week, but it sort of seems like every other month that we are getting a 911 phone call from Kim Zolciak and Croy Bierman. And this month is no different. Happy November. Another 911 phone call. Shocker. So before we jump into all of it and we kind of explain what's going on with their home, with the 911 call, all of this shit. Uh, don't forget to go ahead and smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And uh, let's just get right in starting here. Yeah, I feel like that's good. So thank you to Reality Blurb. Kim Zolciak is in the process of trying to revitalize her reality TV career following her stint on The Surreal Life. However, a new television gig was not enough to put an end to their home life struggles. Now she and Croy Beerman have had the police called to their Atlanta home for the first time in months due to a tense verbal altercation. This comes as the mansion is set to be auctioned off to the highest bidder in under a month. Plus, she's continuing to spark dating rumors with Tom Hanks on Chet. Fans will recall that Kim and Croy have been going through a very public divorce for what seems like for forever. However... Due to the financial struggles, they're both living in the same house and they've had the police called on multiple occasions. And Kim has also sold off secondhand designer items and posted clickbait articles for extra income. According to TMZ, law enforcement sources say that the police were called to Kim and Croy's home on November 18th after someone reported an argument. And upon conducting an investigation, the officers on the scene determined that the argument was verbal and never turned physical. And they calmed down both parties and did an incident report. Um, when they say somebody called because there was an argument, I think that the first thing everybody was thinking like, well, was it a neighbor? Was it who could it have been? But if you look at their property and the property line and the way that the property sits, if they were having an argument inside of this massive mansion that has all of these bedrooms, all of these bathrooms, it had to have been, and I don't, one, if their house is in foreclosure and they have all of this debt and they have help, that would look stupid. So I would imagine that it would either be one of them or one of their kids who would be calling the police. And I think it's really unfortunate for the kids because I think at this point, what they're doing is they're seeing mom and dad fight and you don't know what to do because you were not in the kids' minds, you know? Like, I'm sure they probably have seen things being, being like thrown and things being said and threats and it's terrifying. I used to see it when I was young. And looking at it and kind of reading this, I'm like, no, dude, these kids, like, what they have to go through right now, it is so selfish on Kim and Croy. Out of anyone, they are the selfish parties. I understand that you cannot afford to go live somewhere else and you don't want to live somewhere else and you don't want to give up this, blah, blah, blah. You want to be around the kids. But then if you're going to do that, then also take the responsibility and make an adult decision to not completely disparage each other in front of the kids and at the end of the day you think you're one-upping each other and like oh well you're a bigger asshole no you're a bigger asshole the kids are going to see and remember all of this and they're going to form their opinions and you might not like it if it doesn't go in your favor back to it though no arrests were made and it's also unclear what started the argument and who called however it's somewhat reasonable to guess that one of the children may have called 911 as they have done in the past. And reports say that their 16,000 square foot home will be auctioned off on December 3rd. So this could be why the tensions are high. In other Kim news, the former Atlanta star had the internet pretty much believing she's moved on and is now dating Chet Hanks. They sparked rumors while The Surreal Life was airing, and they also recently went to a concert together. And she took to Instagram and posted a set of pictures with the caption, had the best time with Jelly Roll and his beautiful wifey. So fun, um, so much fun with Chet Hanks and Jenna or Jenny Doyle. One of my absolute favorite concerts and everyone that 
was or is a part of this massive operation is beyond kind. There are no words for the happiness and joy that surrounded us all that night. I saw a whole lot of sparkle in the crowd. Hmm. Now, many people in the comments were skeptical of the potential relationship, and one commenter said that she's looking for another sugar daddy and stepdad to her kids. Um, if she is, in fact, looking for a stepdad for her kids, personally, and I'm not a stepdad, so I don't know, I don't think that Chet Hanks would be the best choice. I don't know if you guys ever saw his interview with Z-Way. It was so cringe. Like, you have to go watch Chet Hanks' interview by Z-Way. You would literally... It was wild. It was like... It was the weirdest interview, but she even looked at him like, you are so unhinged right now. And he definitely looked like bright eyed and bah! I think that's the best way that I can put that. But moving on, moving on. That's not the only Kim Zolciak, Croy Bearman news. Apparently they also dropped the mansion price by $300,000 ahead of their auction. It seems like one way or another, they're getting rid of this house and um, they've been locked in a battle with their mortgager for months and they've been flirting with floor foreclosure, but they have a deadline coming up next month for a foreclosure auction, and they're determined to find a buyer before it reaches that point. So in a last-ditch effort, they've once again slashed the price on their mansion down by $300,000. Just keeps going down and down and down. Kim and Croy's foreclosure auction is scheduled for December 3rd. Time and time again, they've managed to get the deadline extended, but they're running out of chances. And According to TMZ, the couple just cut the price of the house down another 300000 And the asking price now is $3.65 million, nearly $2 million shy of its $5.5 million appraisal value. But the price cut comes weeks after Croy submitted legal documents asking a judge to allow him to force the sale of the home. And Croy claimed that Kim had been turning down buyers while continuing to recklessly spend her money on expensive clothes, wine, gambling. And he's hoping to avoid the foreclosure process and start chipping away at their ridiculous debt. But the potential buyer of this house will be getting a great deal helping out a couple in need. And if that's not enough, they'll also be doing the neighborhood a favor by getting Kim and Croy out of there. Over the last year, they've had the cops called on them numerous times for their fighting. And on top of that, Croy's dog allegedly terrorized the neighborhood. And that was another call from the cops. So... With all of that in mind, whoever buys this house will basically be doing an act of community service. So if you or somebody you know has $3.65 million to spare, well, now is your chance. You can have a beautiful 16,000 square foot freaking mansion um, and a piece of Bravo history where you just know, hey, listen, this mansion was owned by Kim and Croy. This is the same mansion where you had 911. And the dog attacks. And don't be tardy. I don't think I missed anything. And the red solo cup. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I want to hear what you guys think. Guys, pop off in the comment section, please. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And um, also, don't forget that tomorrow we are going live with Amani at... 12 p.m. Eastern, I believe. Yeah, for hot, messy topics. So we're going to be busy tomorrow too. And we will be back. Love you guys.